out now from Severin Films on Blu-ray, is a film I'd never heard of. Uh, it's a genre I've heard of. It's based on a film I've heard of. It is part of an endless series of ripoffs of a film I've heard of. This is Deep Blood from 1990. This is directed by uh, Italian filmmaker Joe D'Amato, who is known for a lot of a lot of not classy films. And this is uh, it's a Jaws ripoff. It's uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by Jaws ripoffs because they started making them maybe about the year after Jaws came out, and there's been at least one a year every year since 1975. This was one of probably 1990s entries, and it's um, it's not good. It's pretty bad. It's uh, but for me, it was kind of entertainingly bad. It would play really well with an audience. Um, I should I should probably tell you what it's about, but if you've seen Jaws, you know what it's about. Shark attacks off the coast of Mississippi. Um, this young guy's friend gets killed, and he is sort of the Brody avatar for this film. And people don't believe him, and they don't want to close the beaches. And people keep they they hunt the sharks, and hey, you didn't get the right shark, and whatever. You've seen Jaws. You've seen the best, obviously, version of this movie. Uh, so this is entertaining. Shot in America in English uh, by by an Italian crew. M maybe they didn't know the acting was bad because it wasn't in their native language. I have to imagine you can tell in any language when acting is bad, but it seems like mostly non-actors in this film. Two notable recognizable faces to me were Charlie Brill and Mitzi McCall, who were a uh, comedy team back in the 60s. They were actually a comedy team who performed before the Beatles did on Ed Sullivan. And if you ever go back and watch that footage, you can hear nonstop screaming teenagers while they're trying to do their comedy routine. And, I, and I've seen things about interviews with them about this and I they like couldn't hear each other when they were doing a routine it's pretty crazy anyway how interesting deep blood is is why I'm telling you about the comedy team of Mitzi McCall and Charlie Brill they're actually the best part about this movie to me they're actually quite good and their roles are dramatic in this film now Charlie Brill was in another film whose uh, name escapes me right now because it wasn't very good that Arrow had released that was sort of like a set in India action movie and he played this like brown face leather uh, Inspector Clouseau kind of thing that was just horrifically bad, but Charlie Brill's really good in this, and it's always interesting to me to see when you somebody who's a comedian and how good, how oftentimes how good a comedian can be at dramatic acting. And Mitzi McCall's quite good too. <clears throat> they give performances that this movie does not deserve. Um, other than that, it's just a whole lot of late '80s, early '90s preppy kids uh, hanging around, you know, the beaches and the docks and the marinas somewhere in Mississippi, talking about shark attacks, uh, all of which are done via stock footage. Uh, there, there are these shark attacks. The first shark attack in the movie, this woman gets attacked, and you know, the blood is jettis jettisoning blood in the water, and there's bubbling water and all kinds of thrashing. And, but the color and quality, clarity and cut of the blood that is being spewed everywhere. Um, it looks like she, she, she had Pepto-Bismol in her arteries. <laughs> it, does, it was a really odd look to the blood. Um, I watched this and I thought, you know, no harm, no sharks were harmed in the making of this film because no sharks were anywhere near the making of this film. It is clearly all kinds of stock footage that doesn't match. And it's just... Um, it's an inter interesting editing exercise, let's say. So the, the film is, is, is really, the acting is bad, the dialogue is bad, uh, competently made, I guess you could say, as far as the shots and the cutting for the most part, but it's, it's pretty bad. And I'd never heard of it before. I don't know if this ever had a U.S. release before. Uh, clearly being shot in America with, you know, an all English speaking cast, I'm sure the intent was for the international market. But it also feels like maybe it was made for cable overseas. It's four by three, so cable or home video, I think was probably the intended uh, venue for this film. Um, it's not terribly explicit in any way. I mean, there are shark attacks, but it's mostly just, you know, shaky camera, a lot of bubbles in the water, some stock footage, and maybe they throw some Pepto in the, in the, in the pool. And uh, no nudity and, and not a whole lot of profanity. So it, it's kind of an odd duck. Uh, Sadly, I mean, Transfer looks as good as can be expected for a movie of this era uh, from Severn. Severn always does a nice job with what they what they release. 
but uh, there's not really much in the way of extras other than a trailer. And uh, I was a little disappointed in that because I really, it's one of those things where you watch a really bad movie and I, for me, I wanna watch the extras or I wanna watch the uh, commentary uh, just so somebody will tell me why. Why was this made? Why does this exist? Why, why is it like this? And sadly, I guess you'll have to, as they say, as, the, as some people say on the internet, do your own research because there isn't any to be had. Aside from the liner notes on the back of the, um, the Severin Blu-ray case, uh, there's, there's not a lot of insight into the, uh, the method behind the madness of deep blood out now from Severin Films on Blu-ray.